Bella Vista Community Television presents Bella Vista and Beyond. Today our host is Tricia Ayers and we will be talking about Handle with Care, Child Care Busy Minds, and the Bella Vista Public Library. And now to the studio for our program. Welcome to Bella Vista and Beyond, and yes, my name is Tricia Ayers, and I will be your host today. Um, Jody Moore, who is my usual co-host, has sick children at home, so we hope that they get better soon. Flu is everywhere, and so I'm so sorry about that, Jody. Um, we'll see you next month. Hopefully. So today's program, my first guest is Amy Field, and she is with Handle with Care Move Managers. Amy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Trisha. Um, we have met previously mm -hmm. a couple of times. We yep. come into contact with what we both do. Mm -hmm. Handle with Care Move Managers, tell me what that is. Okay. So it's pretty much an innovative company. It's an all-encompassing solution for downsizing and relocation. We specialize in moving seniors from their home into their retirement solution. And we do absolutely everything from the sorting and downsizing to the moving and decorating to the liquidation of the items they don't want and the cleaning of the house. And also um, sometimes there are other things that they need such as they're going to have to have some things shredded. They're going to have to have some furniture cleaned. We can work with other industry professionals to get all those things done to make it as smooth as possible. Wow, that, mm -hmm. that is innovative because is. usually when I think of move managers, mm -hmm. I think of I'm coming to get your stuff, right. I may pack it up for you, and then I'm either putting it in a storage container mm -hmm. or I'm putting boxes in another home. Right. So that's wonderful. Right. How long has the business been going? It's just been the last year, the last year that it, we started up. Okay. I am sure that you have uh, encountered a few interesting characters yes. <laughs> in, the, in the, the time that the business has been open. Yes. What are the main challenges do you see when you go into a home? One of, probably the main challenge, and everyone's different, it, it is not true of every client, but we do have a lot of clients who are very attached to their belongings. And it's very important, this is one of the things that's so great about our company, is that we understand these are not belongings to them. These are not just tchotchke and shelf items. That these are their memories. A lot of these people, this has been their home where they raise their children. Uh, it might have been their retirement home, but now it's a new phase and it can often be a very difficult choice to move to a retirement community. So we specialize in figurative and literal hand-holding to help them through the downsizing process. So what are some of your suggestions? We were talking a little bit earlier mm -hmm. um, before the show uh, mm -hmm. about um, now we're seeing that the kids don't want mm -hmm. the 25 piece china mm -hmm. set. Right. It, it takes up a lot of room and we're not seeing as many formal functions mm -hmm. in the home as we as we once did. Yeah. So how do you help in that situation? Mm -hmm. There are a couple of ways and that can be very hard for people. Nobody wants their belongings and of course they don't want them to just go to a goodwill um, because they were important. So we could take one plate of the china or if you have several sets we could put them in plate hangers and we can put them on the walls in your home so you still see them. We can set the table for a formal setting as it would have been for a holiday and then take a picture of that and put it in an album for you so that you've got that concrete memory. And then I always talk to them about the fact that there are people who want these things and it'll be going to someone who loves it. They're not going to pay money for it if they don't love it. Right. So even though you're passing it along to a stranger, it's going to go to a home and be loved. Mm, that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I love that. I know when we were also talking about this, um, the challenges from moving from a home, mm -hmm. if you are moving into a senior retirement community, mm -hmm. you, you're not getting the same square footage no. because your move there is there's no maintenance, everything's taken right. care of for right. you. That's a different life that you're right. living. It is. A wonderful life, but right. a different life. Yes. So how do you manage that from your standpoint mm -hmm. of getting your clients to look at their home mm -hmm. and 
what do I take, what do I not take, or right. what can I take? Right, exactly. So starting out with a uh, look at the floor plan that they're moving into, and I'll look at their home and their things. I have a very good rough idea to begin with of how much will fit in that space. And if we are looking at a client who really has a ton of stuff, then we'll actually give you measurements of the closet and we'll say, okay, this is literally how much will fit. And then what I do is I always tell them this quote by William Morris and it is, have nothing in your home which you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. We start with that and that helps a lot when I'm, we're literally looking through things and I'll pick something up and say stay or go. Well, if they'll get a look on their face that's dreamy and far away, that's obviously important. It's going to go with you, even if it has no purpose. If they kind of look and go back and forth and go, eh, then that's neither necessary, necessary nor beloved. That can go. We start with that. There's sometimes a second sort. And there's sometimes at the very end, okay, maybe that's not going to fit. Maybe we'll just take one of those instead of two. Um, it's, a, it's a process, but it goes a lot faster than anyone believes. So you talk about the process and the time mm -hmm. from when that person decides mm -hmm. that they're selling their property and their move is either to a new property mm -hmm. or into a senior retirement community. What's the average time period of how long that takes? That it depends on so many factors, but we can do a fast move. We've done several okay. fast moves. You decide on Wednesday, we can get you out in a week. Wow. You got to cooperate. Wow, <laughs> um, you've got to be able to will to be willing to put the time in with us to just look and decide what goes. Um, but if we can get everyone lined up, we can get it done quickly. We like a little more planning, but you know we can work fast. That's good to know. Yeah, that's yeah. good to know. When I want to leave the house yes. and just leave the kids at home, <laughs> you've got a yes. week. Okay, exactly. So what is your process as far as if we are moving into a senior community? Do you like to get people moved out? first and get them settled in their mm -hmm. community before, and you have an auctioneer that comes yes. in, correct? Right. So the process is we do the sorting and the packing and then we move them and we, the first night in their home, they will be set up, depending on how much stuff they have, their home might be completely set up with artwork on the walls and ready to go. Or it might just be the bed is set up, the towels in the bathroom are coffee pot, all of that is set up, the furniture, nothing is in the way where you're going to trip, a trip hazard, and then we come back the next day and set it all up. But we don't leave until every piece of artwork is on the walls, every box is unpacked, and it's your home. Do you ever have people, when they're moved in, and then they're like, oh, I really wish I yes. brought that with me. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure yes. it's an so, adjustment period. Exactly, and that's what's so wonderful. The house is not yet sold. We can go back and we do. Oh, you want that basket or oh, you want that extra coffee pot. We go get it and we bring it back. You have a time period before the auctioneers will come in and they will clear out every single item that you left. They will sell it for a percentage and they are, since they're getting percentage, they want as much money as, as they can get for you. So if you have items that are collectible or special, They've been in business a long time. They know that. And if they can find, they know who comes to their auction. So they'll, they'll let them know, I have a clock collection coming to this auction. You should come. So that can maximize your profits. When they've cleared out the house, then we have house cleaners come and clean it and make it perfect to put on the market. So it, it, we can have trash hauled off. We can have your private paper shredded. We, will take care of everything and we work with other industry professionals to get it all done. That is really full service. Yeah. I mean that really is mm -hmm. and I think that is the trepidation sometimes especially mm -hmm. from seniors because you have accumulated yes. um, over your lifetime mm -hmm. and just the the sheer thinking about the process. That can be overwhelming oh, just yeah, thinking about absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. That's wonderful to have that service. Mm -hmm. um, and I do love the fact that the auctioneer comes and takes everything yes. with him. Yeah. So and he is a character. He is a character. And he has been in the business for a very long time, <laughs> yes. which is what you want also. Exactly. But I love the fact that people are not yard sailing in your house. No, they're not coming into your home and, and picking through your right. things. And he's very knowledgeable. Very. 
Mm -hmm. I remember seeing you on a panel with mm -hmm. him, um, the Senior Smart Talk series, yes, mm -hmm. um, which you were on uh, about downsizing, and, yes. and he was there, and just just such valuable information. Yeah. So how do people contact you? Um, call us. Uh, our number is 479-222-0214. Um, and Allison can set up an appointment to uh, just decide, tell you our services and decide whether or not you want to, to hire us. And then Dan will come in and uh, meet with you, appraise how much work there is to do, and decide whether or not you want to sign a contract. And Allison is Allison Van Hecke. Yes. And she She's with Lighthouse Group Realty right. through Keller Williams. And specializes in Specializes seniors. in senior senior relocations, yes. Yeah, so. And she was a social worker for she many was, years. She was, and that's what makes it wonderful. This is She started this part of the business because she wanted to help people. Um, it just is a way to help people through this stage of their lives. And we make friends with our clients. We go back and call them and check on them, and um, we just really love what we do. Thank you. I can see that you do. Yeah. I can see that you love what you do. Yeah. Thank you, Amy, Thank for you coming so much. in. Come back again. I will. I'd like to hear more stories of clients. Okay. I think that would be fun. Yep. And um, if you need those services, please do call Amy. Um, it, it's worth calling and getting an estimate of what you're, what you're doing and the challenges ahead. So um, we're going to take a short pause, and we will be back after the break with more guests. Thank you. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Here is our host, Tricia. Well, welcome back, everybody. I am very excited about our next guest. I actually got to um, correspond with her just a couple of days ago. She is a new member to the Bella Vista Business Association, and I have been driving by where her new business is going to be, and so it's very exciting to have her here. Um, her name is Tanya Murray, and she is the owner and uh, propri proprietor of Busy Minds Academy. Tanya, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And I was excited. You joined the Bella Vista Business Association a couple of days ago. I saw your name come up, and then I've been driving by your property. So Busy Minds Academy, what is Busy Minds Academy? So it is a child care and preschool center that is located on Forest Hills Boulevard, right by the the road department and the Boys and Girls Club. We will provide care for children ages six weeks to five years old, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. I think that's so needed here. And as we were talking about earlier, because of the use of the bypass now, you're on a lot of people's commute in the morning, a lot of uh, working moms, working dads that need to go to work. So what, what gave you the idea to to begin Busy Minds. Do you have Busy Minds of your own? <laughs> I mean, I've always been interested in early child education and also their development. And, you know, raising my own kids just strengthened that passion. And when I realized there wasn't a full-time child care facility in Bella Vista, I became really motivated and, and just driven to make it happen. That's correct, because we have, there's, um, I know there's a couple of church programs that go on, um, but they're generally Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, and only like a few hours in the day. So for working folks who need to have their children taken care of, that's going to be wonderful. Now, six weeks, that's hard. I know as a mom, it's hard at six weeks to, to hand your precious bundles over. Yes. Don't you think? It is. Yes. I mean, it really is. You know, we appreciate the uniqueness of each individual child and... Um, you know, their dignity and their worth. And, and so I'm really excited to be able to bring this amenity and service to the families in Bella Vista. So how many children do you have, if I may ask? 41. 41? Forty-one. Uh, 41. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. That is going to be awesome. Yeah. And yourself, how many kids do you have? I have five. Five. It feels like 500. I'm sure. And, and what are their ages, if I may ask? My youngest is in first grade and my oldest is in 10th grade. And they're just, I'm biased, but they're just really good. They're good people. They're not just good kids, but they're good humans. So you have a lot of experience with kids. Yeah. A lot of experience. Yeah. So what made you, I know you saw a need, but that's a huge challenge to go, okay, I mean, to step up and do this. Yeah, I mean, I just have a lot of, um, 
positive energy, and I'm like, I can, I could do that. I should do that. I'm actually going to do that. And so I just woke up and just started, started on the path. And um, the facility has a really great backyard, and wow. so it's going to have a really great outdoor play area. It's massive. It's 5,000 square feet. And so, you know, the, the kiddos will be able to really experience nature base play as it as it's intended to be. They'll be able to get grassy and muddy and and wet and and just really have a great outdoor experience. Now I was on the website this morning, busymindsacademy.com. Yes, busymindsacademy.com and also on Facebook, uh, Busy Minds Academy. Okay, I haven't found the Facebook site yet. I'll go and follow do me, like me, I share will. me. I will. Okay, follow you, like yeah. you, share. Absolutely. Um, but it said August is your open. Yeah, we're opening August third. Okay. And so we'll be having an open house Saturday, May the 9th, um, that families can come and tour and and um, chat with staff and ask any questions that they might have and see the the play area and and enroll on that day. And even if you're just curious about what you're offering, may we come? And if we don't have little children anymore, can we still come? And yes, everyone, everyone welcome. We're going to have pizza. <laughs> Sign me up. Yes. Sign me up. Yes. So you said from what age to what age? Six weeks to five. To five. Yeah. So just when those kids are about to go into kindergarten. Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes, we'll have three classrooms. We'll have an infant room, a toddler room, and then a preschool room. And the preschool room will envelop the three, four, and five-year-olds, just kind of a, um, a modeling atmosphere from the younger kids to the older kids. Now, I work a lot with seniors, and we're regulated by the state. Are you also regulated by the state? Th yes, thankfully and incredibly um, regulated by the state as of... Um, bathrooms and doors and, right. and um, ratios and they do a really good job with the early childhood community keeping everybody kind of up to standard and keeping the kids safe and, and the parents happy. What is the ratio for? So for infants mm -hmm. the ratio is one to five. One to five, okay. And um, for toddlers it's one to eight and then when you get to the preschoolers you're one to twelve. Okay. And then kind of about four and five it, it's about one to fourteen, one to fifteen. Okay. Yeah. I think at the adult day program where I help out it's one to eight clients. We have CNAs. Wow. Okay, yeah. So we, we we both ends of the spectrum here. Yeah. From the young to the old. Yeah, and that, you know, that's to just really uh, make sure that, that the children have a good experience, that they're safe and secure, and um, that they have a, a positive learning environment. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in thank today. You. I'm very Thanks excited for, for your business, and thank hopefully you. our community will uh, will open their arms and reach out to you. Thank there you. are lots of little kids in Bella Vista now, and, and they need yeah. somewhere to go when moms and dads are working. So yeah. thank you so much. Appreciate and we will, it. we will see you at the open house, May. May the 9th. May the 9th, yes. we'll be there. Thank you. I'm going to go, there's pizza. Yes. So everybody loves pizza. Well, um, usually we have Bailey from the library and of course she will not disappoint us today. We appreciate her so much. Um, she's such a vivacious addition to our show. So Bailey, welcome. Well, what, a, what an intro. Oh, it, it's so true. <laughs> What is happening? The pressure. The, the pressure, pressure to live up to yes. that now. Well, um, if you've stopped by the library recently, you may have noticed that it's a bit crazier than usual, which is kind of saying something because we are usually a little off the rails. Yes. But um, our expansion is well underway. Um, did you ever think you'd see the day? I know. It's, it, uh, we're at the point where it is fully enclosed, so <gasps> now they're working on all of the inside, so like electricity and drywall and, and those sort of things. But it is really it just incredible to see that it's come this far because it's been something our foundation has been working on for as long as I've been there. Working very, very hard. Yes. I know what it's like to have to raise money for a project. It's very difficult, and especially construction projects in general always throw more at yes. you than you're ever going to expect. Always a little bit more expensive. Yeah, so it's just a continual thing. Um, but we're very excited it's coming along. Um, I think right now they're saying that the completion date is about mid-March, but of course we're still in winter. Really? Mid-March? Wow. So we will see. Okay, yes. That's just kind of the current estimate. But of course with weather and those crazy construction curveballs, you never quite know. Um, but we're excited 
excited for the time when it's finally open and furnished and we can offer all our great programs. And I had teenagers that were excited. My teenagers both online school, so they go uh -huh. into campus high yes. school for some classes and a lot of them they online. Yes. And just they need a more structured setting to do their schooling sometimes. Exactly. And they saw the huge building at the back and they were like, oh, that is going to be perfect. It's so. going to be great. And with how we're getting this new space that's going to allow us to rearrange our current space a bit mm -hmm. and our team section will be expanding greatly. Ooh. So not only will we be able to offer more titles and materials but more dedicated team space. Wonderful. So they'll have to look for that when that's ready too. Oh, they absolutely will. <laughs> so what else is happening? I know there's always stuff happening. Oh, there's happening. always stuff happening. Since we were talking about teens, I'll talk about our upcoming teen night. So once a month we have a teen night and it varies from topic to topic and lately our teen advisory board has actually been the one schedule or planning and scheduling our teen nights. So in March, we're actually moving it up a week to accommodate spring break. Um, but it falls on Friday the 13th. Ooh. And our teen advisory board said we have to have a spooky Friday the 13th evening. So I'm not entirely sure what they've got in store for us yet, but I'm sure it'll be fun, kind of spooky themed games. Nothing too scary, of course, but just some little fun play on the date that it happens to fall on. So that is fr March, Friday the 13th at 5.30. Okay. And the library is closed during that time, so parents can drop off their teens. No one is allowed in the building. No one is allowed out of the building without, you right. know, you're getting into the right car sort of situation. So it's a it's kind of a lockdown environment during that time. Great. It's it is great because they our teens can be a bit noisy. Well, and they need that. And they need that. So it's kind of their space. It's really it's always a fun time. So we are very happy to be able to offer that. And for the little ones. For the little ones, we always have our preschool story time on Friday mornings at 10. Um, we also have an evening story time, Tuesday evenings at 5. And recently we've just started kind of a new non-book club book club called Readers Assemble. So basically what it is, is you just get together and read at the library. We're not, you, we're not gonna tell you what book you have to pick. We're not gonna tell you, you know, you have to answer all these questions about whatever book it was. Just come to the library, have fun with friends, and pick a book off the shelf. Kind of, um, the schools kind of did that um, for some of the younger ages. So we were trying to, you know, get more kids, you know, in the library to read nice. some books. Don't you have an educational series? I've seen some in some place you have an educational series that goes on periodically, people come in and... and we do. Um, usually that's our adult speaker series. Okay. And usually it is on the second Monday of the month. And we took a break for the winter just because it's it's very difficult to get people in and you don't really know what the weather's gonna be. And it's they're usually at six. And when it's dark at six, it's just, it's not a good time to do that in the winter. Right. So we will be starting that back up in April. Okay. Um, and that'll run through the rest of the year. And then when our summer reading program starts, it's actually every week. Wonderful. And that I've already got them all booked. And if I do say so myself, they're going to be quite interesting. You've done a fabulous job. I've done a wonderful job. Good. They're going to be very interesting. Good. And we were also talking about, um, well, blogs. No, not blogs. Podcasts. Podcasts. Sorry. Senior moment there. <laughs> Podcasts. Yes, the library does have a podcast. Um, it's Librarians Unhushed. And um, we, th we thought it was clever. And uh, periodically, um, myself and our adult services librarian will get together and just kind of talk about, again, a variety of topics. So it could be, you know, what new books have come out. It could be the latest movie that everybody's been talking about right. that we did not like. Okay. We've done that before. <laughs> and just various other topics that's kind of fun and just a way to connect to the community in a different way. Wonderful. So Wonderful. It's very fun. Always so much going on at the library. And thank you always for coming in, Absolutely. Bailey. Absolutely. You, you put pep in my step. <laughs> I love Glad that. To help. Well, thank you for joining us for our show today. Um, lots of interesting information. I always learn something. Um, we do hope that Jody's children get to be feeling better very soon. I'm sure they will, and everybody take care out there. There's a few things happening. We have um, a couple of fairs coming on um, at Reardon Hall. First of all, we have the Bella Vista Business Association Fair coming March 19th from 9 to 1. So that's March 19th from 9 to 1. And then we have our wonderful Senior Expo.
coming in. We generally have about 450 people who come through that, and that is April 23rd from 9 to 1. April 23rd from 9 to 1. Please mark your calendars once again. Thank you to all of my guests today, and thank you for joining us. Remember, you can see this program on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at various times. You may also view this program on YouTube.com by going to Bellavista TV. Presentation of Bella Vista Community Television. Thank you for joining us.